Buenos días. Uh, good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Juan Colbarreo. I'm a professor here in Madrid School of Architecture. And uh, I'm a professor also in NC State School of Architecture and in NC State Graduate School. Uh, um, I have been for the last three years uh, um, director of the section of theory and criticism of the Master of um, uh, Advanced Architectural Design. That is the program who uh, organized this conference. Uh, Dr. Luis Maldonado, Dean uh, of Madrid School of Architecture, and Dr. Federico Soriano, Head of the Department of Architectural Design in this school, asked me to talk uh, to you today in the opening ceremony of, the, of this uh, conference. And Silvia Comenares asked me to talk to you in English. Uh, so <laughs> I'm very happy to talk in English or in English with my uh, downtown Madrid accent, uh, uh, accepting the request of my friends uh, Luis and Federico. Um, and for me, um, uh, it's a very um, important moment. This I'm really very, very happy uh, to um, um, launch and to work on you, uh, to launch the conference and to work on you here to the School of Architecture. And uh, um, let, me, let me tell you why. Uh, more or less three years ago, um, we thought that we should uh, in some way change uh, the um, all conception of criticism in our schools, uh, in the school of architecture, in, at least in Europe or uh, at least in Spain. Um, and we thought that we must try a more, um, a more open way to think in criticism. Um, and we saw that the master in advanced architectural design was probably the right place to, to try to do that. Uh, so we uh, did a couple of things. First time, we uh, transferred the um, section of theory and criticism in our Master of Architectural Design. And that's why Lab 4 was born. Uh, like a free place, like a place uh, where everyone, students and teachers, uh, play in a kind of freedom and they can do what they want. It's a kind of free place. Was, that was our um, first step in uh, that kind of um, that kind of concern about changing the criticism in our schools. The second one was to put up new researches. Uh, in uh, our master, in our laboratories, to try to uh, improve the way in which we can research inside uh, our master degree. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, we put up, for example, Mid Mines. That is the exhibition that you can see in the lobby. This is a small, um, a small overview of the of the research. Mid Mines was like all the researches in our master and in our uh, section, uh, we are open to other fields of knowledge, open to painters, filmmakers, musicians. Uh, and we can do that thanks to a great, uh, a great support of external students in the master and, uh, and a strong relationship with the city, with the society, and with other arts and other fields of knowledge um, um, that were very, very close. And our third concern, trying to change the way with what we can think about criticism was uh, uh, in my own, an international conference uh, here in Madrid School of Architecture to discuss theory and criticism. And um, that's how we launched uh, this uh, conference, that we launched Critical. Uh, we didn't want a kind of, uh, a kind of conference that just uh, 
collect uh, the more recent um, research about key diseases in the central parts of the world. We want, we want, of course, an open conference. And for that reason, we call the conference critical. Logically, the important word is all. All uh, means, in the first place, means everyone. We want to involve and to include uh, all proposals, all interests, uh, regardless of their origin. I know that there is a lot of proposals coming to the Congress, and I know that there's a lot of work trying to, uh, trying to, um, to collect all that different proposals in the, in, the, in the conference. All means also all the formats. Uh, in the same way that we uh, defend in our searches in the section of theory and criticism in the Master of Architecture, Advanced Architectural Design, that criticism can be made through very, very different formats. And criticism can be, uh, for example, a theater, a theater play, or a fake documentary, or a blog, a social network, or an installation. Uh, for example, in the last uh, couple of months ago, an installation of columns of red smoke. That could be, uh, that could be criticism. Uh, because that's a theory. Because we thought that theory and criticism must be close to the reality. That's the criticism, to be close to the reality, to the present reality and to the future reality to be close to the reality and to the dreams. That's why we thought that we must improve our formats. And because changes in format uh, with its novelty make uh, big jumps in knowledge. And we are trying to do that in our conferences. All uh, means, of course, all fields of knowledge. Uh, we assure us that architecture and architectural design and architectural criticisms uh, are not isolated, will not be isolated, and should not be isolated. And all means, of course, to open up our conference, our results, our conclusions. Critical, in our opinions, means that the word critic is uh, evolving towards the war or we imagine that in the future we shall replace critic by all uh, and we talk about all because uh, it would be the only way to really talk about criticism to the only way to really call about uh, architecture uh, criticism so means all um, we hope, therefore, that this second edition of uh, the conference will be still closer to the old than the first, and that we move towards uh, more and more progressive and open conditions and positions uh, in the conference. Well, finally, I know that many of you uh, come from other parts of Europe or from abroad and that some of you have made a long journey uh, to be here. Thank you very much for your effort, and welcome to the city of Madrid. Madrid is a beautiful and open city. I hope that in addition of the attendance of this conference, you can enjoy the life of the city, uh, this architecture, this modern architecture. You can enjoy Juan de Villanueva also his tons of art, his theaters. You know that Madrid is a core and everything is a theater here. Uh, like everything is a theater in the modernity, like this conference is also a theater. I uh, want to perform them a uh, beautiful play with you here. So thank you uh, all of you for coming. And thank you, I want to thank you very much also to Sylvia, to Luis and uh, all the organizers. There's a lot of people that are, had a 
hard work here, and thank you uh, for your effort and for your continuous work preparing the conference this uh, second uh, year of the conference. Thank you for your great effort, and thank you for the success uh, of the second edition of the conference. Uh, my special thanks also to Anthony Wilder, our first guest speaker. Uh, so welcome all to Madrid, welcome to the School of Architecture, welcome to the Department of Architectural Design and to the Master of Advanced Architectural Design. So if you want, we can, all of us, uh, declare open a critical second international conference of architectural design and criticism. So thank you very much. And uh, Silvia Comenares has the floor very long. Well, um, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the second edition of the Critical International Conference on Architectural Design and Criticism. Uh, we are very happy to have you here and hope that these three days of intense activity will be useful and pleasant for you all. Uh, celebrating the second edition is quite important for us, not just because it is the confirmation that Madrid School of Architecture was needing to have this kind of scenario, where research is promoted within, a, in a, within an international agenda, but also because, as everybody knows, number two is always the promise of a series. Critical is a long-term project that hopefully will extend through the years to come. After the welcoming words of uh, Juan Cole, the Secretary of the Architectural Design Department, I just want to take the floor to make some quick comments on how the sessions have been arranged. As you can see, if you have the program in front of you, there are two main lectures with which we open and close the symposium. We have the pleasure to count on Anthony Pittler and Sarah Whiting for this. Panels have been arranged according to uh, resonances between the papers that finally passed uh, the last stage of the review process. We received um, one, 119 uh, abstracts, um, only 68 papers were selected, and those are the ones that have been included in the digital proceedings of the conference. And finally, 21 authors uh, have been invited to present orally. For each of these four panels, uh, there is an invited speaker who will also give a short lecture and uh, will guide the discussion at the end. It is important to say that this time has been thought of as a working time. We want these debates to be a very vivid and participatory meeting, where not only authors can clarify the point of their work in the light of the questions arising, but also the debate is open to all the attendees. We rely on the panel leaders to, make the, to manage this uh, situation, but it's important that everyone gets to feel part of it. As a conclusion, and after Sarah Whiting's lecture on Wednesday, there will also be a final debate between some of the panel leaders and keynotes. As we know that time is limited and that many issues might have uh, fallen out of the panel conversations, we have enabled a mailbox uh, for questions that will be uh, channeled to the conductor of this final debate as a suggestion. Uh, you will find it just behind the big letters uh, that are at the lobby, and you just need to use some of those pinky papers available uh, there. Of course, there will also be some relaxing time amid this frenetic program, coffee breaks at the pauses, some after work time at the patio on Monday and Tuesday that has been possible with the support of uh, Madrid's uh, architect institution, the COAM and uh, Heineken, and also a closing cocktail at the same open area on, on Wednesday. Uh, in addition, there is an exhibition at the, at the lobby entitled Meet Myths that has been created for, by, by three former students of the MPAA, the master commanded by the Architectural Design Department, with the guidance of uh, Professor Juan Col. Uh, it is the result of the work elaborated by many other students at the lab number four, 
on the academic year 2014-15 and consists uh, of five interviews to relevant members of uh, San Fernando Royal Academy of Beaux Arts. And uh, I guess that's all. Uh, I hope you will enjoy your time here and that all efforts made are worthy. Uh, I leave you now with uh, Luis Rojo, who will talk in the, in the name of uh, the scientific committee and will frame a little bit the proposed topic for the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Silvia. Um, my task today is to introduce the theme of, of uh, the conference, um, which, as you know, it's on uh, uh, autonomy, architecture's autonomy. So the first question to be asked and answered would be, why now again a debate on autonomy? And uh, I think even more important, where, where do we stand ourselves now in regard to autonomy? I think the program of the conference uh, is printed and there was a handle uh, in the call for papers uh, gives already some clues about that. And I'm just gonna read one paragraph of it, which I think is significant uh, for the whole thing. It says, globalization extends through the economic, social, political, technological, warfare, and, eco and ecological, technological, warfare, and ecological realm. As heir to postmodernism, its distaste for utopia and ideology promotes a concealed recognition of status quo. If we were to redraw once again the body of architecture, its organs, or even its anatomy, with the intention of uh, discerning the identity in relation to the complex global interdisciplinarity, we should have to do it in the formless context of, of global realism and mass media, removed from the art object reification of architecture on which autonomy was predicated. Definitely, we ought to understand architecture as complex, but not utopian, transversal, but not critical, uh, operative, but not abstract. So if we uh, try, I will try to answer both questions, uh, where do we stand and why do we uh, think this, this is relevant now, by trying to outline first a certain genealogy of the events uh, that uh, construct uh, the sequence uh, that brought us here. So though I could probably, it could probably be argued that the new identity of architecture created in the Renaissance fully displays the qualities of autonomy, the modern and problematic understanding of the concept of autonomy we are circling around should be traced not that far back. Its origins can be identified, as Professor Bittler has uh, explained us carefully and, and uh, precisely in the writings of Kaufmann's just before and after the Second World War in the 1930s and 1940s. Kaufman connects Immanuel Kant with Ledoux and the rationale of neoclassicism. And if we accept his hypothesis, Kaufman's hypothesis, it goes all the way to modernism through Le Corbusier and the aesthetics of abstraction. So this polemical lineage will stay at the heart of the debate uh, with all its difficulties. But for Kaufman, autonomy is expressed both as a conceptual discourse and in the formal organization, in the design, in the architecture in, in a more literal sense. So it is such direct formal expression of autonomy, as uh, uh, stated by Kaufman, that allow him to link quite directly the abstraction of modernism with a rational venue and the synthetic fragmentation of revolutionary functionalism. However, this lineage, which is at the beginning, I think, splits in the post-war architecture scene, opening up new and opposed interpretations of autonomy. On the one hand, through the figures of Rossi and Rowe, for example, a disciplinary autonomy that reclaimed the role of form and history in the post-war scenario. But on the other, the role of architecture as a critical instrument, the concept of a critical architecture, capable of unveiling its discursive nature as well as its ideological agenda, built up towards the 1970s, and which was finally capitalized by Eisenman through oppositions and by Michael Hayes in assemblage. So the dismembering of the conventions of architecture proposed by Eisenman, of function, form, and history, and the role of critical theory in architectural education frame definitely architecture as a discursive construction rather than as a practical instrument. So that, I, I guess, uh, is one of uh, you know, the, the scene of the, of the 1980s. By then, the architecture had split into trends, fundamentally as a result of the role to be played or to be replayed by these three concept, concepts that come back and four come back and again into this discussion, we have to do with form, with history, and with reason. Form as the symbolic uh, content of form, for example, 
even in plans, in the case of many of the analysis of Eisenman. History as a source of identity and authority, it's disciplinary support in the case of Roe or many others. And reason as a mechanism that relates unproblematically historical architecture with contemporary, because it's a, it's a mechanism that uh, supports uh, uh, the uh, design. And it is in regard to the role played by these three that we can locate all the other actors, say Sebi, Panam, Anderson, Collins, or even Tafuri. But then in, the 19, for, in 1984, the issue no, uh, number 21 of Perspecta, the Journal of Yale School of Architecture, raised again the discussion over autonomy, this time under the spell of the trip through Las Vegas as a subrogate of popular culture, the symbols of the Americana, and the engagement of architecture with the sort of real reality as opposed to an aestheticized and intellectual, intellectualized sorry, vision of such reality or its academic sublimation, reintroducing the social, the political, the vernacular, and the common. The complexity and contradiction of popular architecture versus the obsessive discourse of theory produced in the protected environment of architecture schools or the over-intellectualized analysis, analytical processes of Eisenman methodologies of description and production ended, ended however, inadvertently with the construction boom of the 1990s. So uh, by the beginning of the uh, 1990s, we fall into a sort of a sudden amnesia. The confrontation between the social and cultural engagement versus the critical theory was out of the blue replaced by a new theory more in tune with the times, with the 90s, named later on as uh, new pragmatism. The new pragmatism declared the war on theory and on autonomy. The obscure theory was rejected by the pragmatic Dutch intelligentsia. And through the 90s, we learned that, we learned from them, that to be contemporary meant to substitute disciplinary or disciplinarity for instrumentality. We could say as well that it was in that transition from instrument, uh, disciplinarity to instrumentality that history, with a capital letter, was probably a collateral damage. We learned to construct an architecture discourse that is disciplinary in another way, supported in a kind of pragmatic realism that runs along the actual production of such reality, that unveils architectural mechanism in the actual resolution of an interesting problem or even pure practical needs. Such is the interest of a typical, typical plan, the production of urbanism in Lagos, or the discovery of the genetic, the generic and the, in the, as the contemporary condition. And such was the spirit of the revisiting issue of Perspecta 33 in uh, 2002, when uh, the journal editors decided to revisit the uh, uh, discussion of autonomy. And they made a call for papers under the title Mining Autonomy. And they, and they stated in the editorial piece, and I will read just one piece of it, that far from abandoning the notion of autonomy, mining autonomy maintains a critical position that shifts its attention from the center of the discipline to its borders. So, you know current words we listen often, located at the interface between autonomous withdrawal and cultural determination, critical architecture occupies a position on the periphery where it acts as a mediator, translating knowledge from varied pursuits into the language and conventions of architecture, as well as passing intelligence and speculation from the discipline to the world. I think that what's important within this paragraph is the idea, not just that aut autonomy is being uh, undermined it, it's mining autonomy. Uh, however, it's being preserved in as much as uh, within the description of architecture as an interface, the autonomy is part of the dialectics. Now in 2016, so today, we retrace the role of the concept of autonomy versus instrumentality in architecture and face the need to answer, as I said before, why now and where do we stand? A quick look at the architecture blocks will show you that form is back, if it ever went away. But it would say even more that it's not the form that Rossi and Rowe had in mind. This is another kind of form, the one we're dealing now with, a form, I think one could say, without history, almost a figure without form. Because form today somehow is iconic but not symbolic, has uh, lost its link to the uh, uh, meanings that came from history. I don't mean this in a critical way, necessarily. I just mean this as an observation. 
When I say form without history, I do not mean that it has lost its meaning, that its meaning came just as its meaning just came from history, it comes from history. Simply, formal meaning now comes from all the sources, all the mechanisms, all the relationships to communication, to mass media, to global culture, to dissemination or repetition. Is there, uh, if there was a time when form was autonomous, now it floats free, both in time and in space. And such thing brings back the issue of history as a source of form and culture in architecture, which were, as I said, the very basis of dis disciplinary autonomy. So where do we stand? We stand in the position of somebody which is concerned with the, the pedagogical problem of uh, explaining the students how can architecture be an interface, a mediating device between culture and production, and at the same time, an autonomous discourse. Those two things at the very same time. As architects, we know that there is nothing less autonomous than architecture. Its implications are almost dependency from reality in all its aspects and scales, social, technical, political, economical, etc., is such that it could be argued that architecture is just the very construction of reality. So the concept of disciplinary autonomy has to be a necessary discourse construction, discursive construction to protect ourselves from the contingency of reality. And such is the paradox, that even if architecture is not autonomous from reality, its thinking is. We need to understand, I think, and I'm finished with this, that no matter what we say, architects, we don't work with matter. We work with ideas about matter. <laughs>